Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos back again for some week nine goodness for you. Um, Alex, Jason, back again for the Sackos. We got a little bit of something. Hello something special planned for you guys today uh we are foregoing our usual hot or not sit start format we are foregoing our rankings debate and we're going to be talking about our rest of season targets who you should buy who you should sell based on their strength of schedules and all of those things and so this is all Goodness for you guys. We're going to be posting uh, the spreadsheet that we're going to talk around today on our website, the fantasyfootballsackos.com for you. So you'll have full access to it. Uh, it's a beautiful thing that my lovely partner here, Alex, put together. For free. For free. We don't charge nothing Let's for do these, it. for this goodness. Uh, yeah. I will say that yeah, Alex. You were, you were mocking ahead. me because, because of, of my accounting background and just putting together these huge ass formulas and you're like, you know how I know you're an accountant and yeah, screw you, buddy. <laughs> the, the chart's great. There's so much information on here. Again, like go to our website, take a look at this thing. It's going to blow you. Well, it won't blow your mind, but it, it lays everything out and basically tells you who you're going to need to get rid of and who you're going to want to target uh, to win your league this year. You just you also just have so much more personality than any other accountant I've ever met. So good on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh, man. Uh, Alex and I are facing off against each other in our league of record this week. Um, it's crap because his team has been injured and hurt all season. And then I get to play him the first t- week all season when he finally has all of his starters back. And so I'm going to lose horrendously to a one in seven team, but yeah, I mean, I'm, it is what it is. I'm, I'm one in seven and we, uh, we have four flex spots in our league or three, sorry, three flex spots. And I literally have five running backs that are, that are RB twos or better, including four RB ones or better. Uh, and I'm one in seven and, uh, I'm sitting Todd Gurley. Who's the running back six overall. Just because I can. There you go. And you're still going to lose. You're it's fine. just going to get demolished and I can't wait. <laughs> I probably will. Yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. I was going to say Aaron Jones already got robbed of a one year touchdown. So I'm excited to see how the rest of his night goes. Oh, I digress. boy, Mercedes Lewis. Beautiful I f- man. I feel like I'm 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 more triggered than like Donald Trump right now when oh it comes to that God. stuff like <laughs> oh stop stop counting the votes stop I, counting I should the just fantasy get six points. points because he should have scored dear lord the memes well, yeah I think I actually I was gonna say I, I think well no I think I think because I'm winning on Thursday night then I just win the week right that's how this works no, because my Sunday afternoon games are equivalent to the mail-in vote. So you're just going to watch your lead crumble away. Oh, damn it. <laughs> All, right. All right. Hey, let's let's do this thing. <laughs> All right. So, Alex, let's talk through our rest of season targets, who we like, who we don't like at each position. I feel like, you know, it's pretty uh, standard yep. here. Let's start with quarterbacks that we like um for the rest of the season who are some of your quarterback targets looking ahead (laughs) i'm so afraid that i that these words are going to come out of my mouth but the the team that has the the easiest playoff schedule from who's giving up the most fancy points to quarterbacks is the bears and nick Foles. They, on average, are facing the fourth worst defense in giving up points to the to the quarterback. That's unbelievable how the opportunity that Nick Foles could have the last three weeks of the season. You were you were looking at games against Houston, Minnesota and Jacksonville 
during the fantasy playoffs. That is nasty. That, that is just straight up nasty. And it's it's very similar in all the other positions. So Nick Foles is, is going to be available probably in your 12-team standard league. Um, their, their schedule the rest of the way is is also the easiest, not just weeks 14 through 16. Um, so I'm just saying Nick Foles could be a, a fantasy title winner quarterback, almost similar to Ryan Fitzpatrick last year, um, where they just have that easy schedule. And so maybe you can fire up Nick Foles. It's something to at least consider. Yeah, weeks 14, 15, 16, Nick Foles and the Chicago Bears play the Houston Texans, Minnesota Vikings, and Jacksonville Jaguars. Houston is uh, giving up, what, they're the, the 26th fewest amount of fantasy points to the quarterback. So what is that, like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, eighth most points to the position. And then you got Minnesota, who's giving up the fourth most points to the position. And then Jacksonville, who's giving up the third most points. So, I mean, if you're desperate, or I mean, if it's a super flex league, I would feel confident, I guess, starting Foles. Um, I mean, if heaven forbid there's another yeah. injury or something too, or if you were the DAC manager, obviously you're not going to be able to run out Andy Dalton week in and week out. So maybe Foles is there for people in like four team or sixteen team leagues. Um, what what the strength of schedule shows me is something I already knew, um, and that was I love the mm -hmm. LA Chargers rest of season schedule, and so I'm a big Justin Herbert believer. Um, the guy is already averaging what 24 and a half points per game. <laughs> That's just obscene. And then you give him the fourth easiest for a rest, fourth easiest rest of season schedule and the third easiest playoff schedule. His playoffs are the Falcons, the Raiders and Denver. Like, hello, give me some Justin Herbert. Um, trying to get him everywhere. I just I was a little slow to the uh, Justin Herbert pickup party, so I'm sad. I, I actually missed him more places than I would like to admit, but I'm really excited for what Justin Herbert's going to be able to do in the playoffs. And then, uh, yep. Who else? And do you like? sitting down, like I, I was just going to yes, sitting down there, and this seems so obvious, but I mean, try to go out and get Lamar Jackson after this week. He's got the rough matchup with Indy this week. Um, but after that, like if somebody's willing to give up on Lamar and you might have to pay for it, but it might be worth that playoff matchup of Cleveland, Jacksonville and the New York Giants. Um, we, we've talked about their schedule from before the season even started about how good their playoff matchup is down the stretch. Um, that's why you're so high on J.K. Dobbins. Um, yep. That those three games that that is the fifth that is the fifth easiest quarterback schedule um, currently based on on what teams are giving up. Um, so like j just to talk through it, the easiest schedule is Chicago, and then it's Tampa Bay, the Chargers, Kansas City, and Baltimore round out the the top five, and then Philly is sitting there in the sixth spot. Um, Carson Wentz should have a heyday going forward. Um, so I like all of those quarterbacks are going to be playable come come the fantasy uh, come the fantasy playoffs. Um, and and of those quarterbacks, Nick Foles is going to be the most readily available. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I don't expect him, even though he has the easiest schedule, though, like uh, Tom Brady and Tampa Bay have the second easiest schedule. I don't think Nick Foles will probably be able to touch tom's weekly scores or even herbert's or obviously mahomes or no. lamar's um but yeah i mean if you're desperate and you have somebody like i don't know a ben roethlisberger who has one of the one two three four fifth hardest playoff schedule with buffalo cincinnati and indianapolis like maybe you're looking to pair him so for example, I am somebody that that does have Ben in a league and I'm holding him 
Um, and I'm going to play him on like a weekly matchup basis. He has a nice couple matchups coming up Dallas this week, Cincy Jacksonville. I'm not afraid of, um, but I actually picked up uh, Jared Goff because they actually have a beautiful schedule when paired together. And so that's something else that you can do. If you have somebody that's, you know, looking at a middle of the road schedule or sort of has had some ups and downs and you only want to play them in some plus matchups, look and see if there's anybody on your waiver wire that you can pair that player with. Like I was able to pair Ben. Um, so let's talk about some other players where I think we've talked through some easy guys. Um, I, I guess I would want to highlight Carson Wentz, who's out there in too many leagues and Ryan Tannethrill, who's out there in too many leagues. And then Jared mm-hmm. Goff as well. I mean, these guys are all top 10 easiest uh, play fantasy playoff schedules. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, really difficult upcoming schedule in the next few games. Honestly, these next four games, Chicago, Indy, Baltimore, Indy, do not be surprised if a lot of people drop Ryan Tannehill in, you know, two to three weeks and you should be out there picking him up because that Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay fantasy playoff schedule is unbelievable. Like the guy could win people some champ championships. So he's going to get dropped a lot these next four weeks. Indy twice, Chicago and Baltimore. I can't. Uh, it's, that's brutal. Um, Alex, who are some quarterbacks yeah. that you're trying to stay away from? By far and away, the hardest fantasy football playoff schedule is for Mr. Deshaun Watson. Um, he... Um, He's facing, it's, it's unbelievable, <laughs> Chicago, week 14, Indy, week 15. And j- like, just think about that. That is the number two and number one hardest defenses to score fantasy points against from a, from a, from a quarterback position. He's facing literally one and two. Indy's one, Chicago's two, and giving up points to the quarterback position. Now, with that being said, I mean, Deshaun Watson's going to be, he's going to light up the Bears because they passed on him in the draft a couple of years ago. And so, like, don't get me wrong, he will still score some points um, against the Bears defense. But that, that is brutal. Week six, week, uh, yeah, week 16 against Cincinnati, fantastic matchup. But th- those first two weeks um, are almost... Like you can't start him either one of those weeks, honestly. Yeah. And Cincinnati is uh, giving up the 16th most points to the quarterback position. So like on paper, it's not the greatest matchup because it's not like they're giving up the absolute most fantasy points to QBs like, you know, Jacksonville, Seattle, Atlanta. But that defense is so putrid across the board that they kind of just, I don't know. I'm not worried about. Deshaun Watson's ability to score against Cincinnati. So I wouldn't be afraid to start him in week 16. I think you'll be very lucky to make it past Chicago and Indy, though, if he's your starter in the first two rounds. Um, yeah. Uh, but man, uh, the second most difficult schedule is Cam Newton and the New England Patriots. Um, as far as the playoffs are concerned. And so Cam already hasn't looked himself since he missed a couple weeks with COVID. Um, That offense, that whole team is just not, it's not great. So I would not, I would be doing everything I could to try to not start Cam. I wouldn't be trying to trade for Cam. Um, I, I would avoid him. And then... Uh, like I said earlier, if you have Ben, I'm trying to pair him with somebody to make as much of that schedule viable as possible. Um, yeah, that's that's who I think I'm I'm mostly trying to avoid. Other than that, like Matt Ryan has an appealing schedule over the next five or so weeks, but then his playoff schedule of the Chargers. Tampa Bay and Kansas city is in the top 10 most difficult. So, I mean, I don't know when your trade deadline is in your league, but if you're able to, you know, have him 
produce against Denver and then he has a buy and then New Orleans and then try to trade him. I would absolutely try to do that and look for somebody that has an easier schedule. Maybe go for somebody like Carson Wentz, um, package something, try and get Lamar or go for Herbert. Because again, I really think Herbert's going to blow up. So he already has been. Um, yeah, again, go go to the website, take a look at this at these charts that, that we have available, uh, the fantasy football sackos dot com. Um, it, it's really going to it's basically dummy proof to where you're going to be able to look at this. It should be it's going to be color coded. So even if you can't understand what's going on, you can at least see, oh, green is good. Red is bad. Um, <laughs> but just 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 go take, just go take a look at this thing. <laughs> Um, we're we're going to we'll try to update it um, on a on a weekly basis as we kind of get closer here, because, um, you know, obviously things change on a week to week basis. Um, but, yeah, those those are the quarterbacks to avoid. Everybody else is kind of in the middle. Um, there, there's not like a glaring uh, glaring hole. But, uh, yeah, the so the, the five five or six hardest here, Houston, New England, Detroit, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Miami um are the and the, and then um and then atlanta so th- those are the quarterbacks that you're going to want to stay away from um in the fancy playoffs and and try to go after somebody that has a, a little bit better schedule just the playoffs mean everything if your team's good enough to get in it's all matchup based once you get there um and so that's why it's that's why we're talking about it now before trade deadlines pass before um you know, maybe somebody else is really starting to look ahead at the playoffs because um, most leagues have a couple more weeks until the trade deadline. Um, if, if you can be wheeling and dealing a little bit now, uh, if you're comfortable with five weeks to go until the playoffs start, you know, now is the time to be trying to make some of these moves because um, once you're in, it's it's all matchup based. Yeah. And somebody, uh, I guess the one person I would want to highlight out of that group is Josh Allen. If you are a Josh Allen roster manager, he's somebody that you should have already traded. And if you haven't, you should trade him after he faces Seattle. Um, I just, that they go on by in week 11 and then their schedule after the buy is the Chargers, the 49ers, the Steelers, Denver, and the Patriots. And they are flying back and forth across the U S to face some of these teams away, some of them at home, and it's just going to be a fiasco for Buffalo. Um, so I would, I would honestly, I would try to trade Josh Allen. I would try to trade him for Lamar. I'd try to trade him for Herbert. Um, I think that you'd probably be able to pull off Herbert. Um, Maybe if you mm-hmm. put something with him, but because he just has been so explosive over the first half of the season because they're I mean, their schedule over the first half was just ridiculously easy. Um, but this is, I think, something, too, that we want to do in the preseason based off of this year's finishes. And so that way for you guys, when you're going into drafts next year, you can sort of, you know, pick out who is the easiest schedule based on this year's performances and who has the easiest playoff schedule as well. And it's nice that we know what we're going to put up has the playoff schedule broken out strength of schedule for each position uh, broken out separately. So that way you can say, Oh, well I'm a seven and one team. Well then I'm really ready for the playoffs. Let's just look and see who has the easiest schedules and see if I can swap my RB two for somebody else's RB two with an easier schedule or so on. Yep. All right, let's speaking of RB2s, let's get into some running backs that we like and don't like. Alex, who are some running backs that you're targeting rest of season or for the playoffs? I mean, I I love my one in seven team that that contains Aaron Jones and David Montgomery, who have <laughs> uh the second and third easiest playoff schedules uh for running backs. Um, Aaron Jones uh, is is finishing up with Detroit, Carolina, and Tennessee. Um, on average, he will be facing the um, the the sixth the worst defense. Um, they're they're giving up the the sixth most points to running back on average those last three weeks. And Aaron Jones is back. Uh, he's facing 
facing the 49ers right now. He looks healthy as we're recording this. Um, he, you know, he's facing the the current number one defense and giving up points to the running back, and he's doing fine. Um, as long as he's able to stay healthy, he's a guy to target. Um, chances are you're not going to be able to, to steal him from somebody. Um, but somebody that you might be able to is David Montgomery, um, who overall has been kind of disappointing. Um, yeah. He's not like a big flat. He's been a, hasn't been a big flashy name. Currently RB 15 um, had the most carries of the year last week against New Orleans, which is good. Uh, half point PPR leagues. He's averaging 11.5 points a game. And I would expect that to go up uh, the rest of the way. Um, he does have a bye week in week 11. Um, so if, if somebody's maybe willing to look at dumping him because of a bye week, um, he would be somebody to try to swoop in uh, after week 10 if somebody's going to be looking to move him. Uh, finishes up the season at Minnesota, at Jacksonville, home against Green Bay. Um, it, again, it's the third easiest running back schedule of anybody. Um, he's somebody that, that you know, people might be sleeping on a little bit. Um, so don't be surprised to see David Montgomery potentially be somebody that's on a lot of people's rosters that, w- that win titles just because I mean, Houston, I believe, gives up the most rushing yards. Minnesota has been overly mediocre and we all know that Jacksonville stinks. Um, so just, you know, take a look. David Montgomery is somebody that I think you can trade for, especially when he has that bye week uh, in week 11. I like it. Um, I feel like he's one of the cheaper running backs that you can get that has a really plus schedule. Uh, as far as Montgomery is yep. concerned, Aaron Jones, whoever has Aaron Jones, isn't going to give him up. Um, I don't no. know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. Um, the running back with the easiest schedule is Derrick Henry. I'm trying to package things and my RB1 to go upgrade and get Derrick Henry with that Jacksonville Detroit Green Bay playoff schedule is just absolutely crazy. Um, might be cheaper after this week when he underperforms against Chicago and their very difficult defense. Um, we'll see. Um, as far as other running backs that I like, the Baltimore Ravens, and I've we talked about this in the last podcast, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they have a, a very easy playoff schedule. They've had an easy schedule you know, since day one. Um, But as far as the rest of season and playoff schedule, they have the ninth easiest schedule for running backs for the playoffs. Um, They face Cleveland, Jacksonville, and the New York Giants running backs that I'm targeting. I'm, I want JK Dobbins in this backfield. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what they do with Mark Ingram. Um, Obviously he was not traded. So I'm, I don't know. I hope that they shut him down or relegate him to backup snaps. Um, when he, when he sat out last week and he has not practiced at all this week, JK Dobbins played 66% of snaps, which is starting caliber snap reps. Um, 52 running backs have at least 50 touches so far this season. JK Dobbins leads all of them in the missed tackle rate per touch at almost 33%. Ingram is last in that stat at five and a half percent. JK Dobbins is tied with Nick Chubb for the most yards after contact per rush at more than four yards per uh, uh, after contact per rush. Um, The guy is unbelievably skilled. They have an amazing rushing offense and a, a, top 10 easiest playoff schedule for um, fantasy points against running backs. So I'm all over JK Dobbins. Um, I'm not really sure if you can get him for very cheap anymore. Um, You know, there's going to be truthers and believers out there that think that he could be top 15, top 20 rest of season. And so you're, I think that you'll probably have to pay up if you want him just because his upside is so massive. So somebody that I think is a little bit cheaper, but could have just as excellent of a finish to his season is DeAndre Swift, another rookie running back. Um, He massively disappointed last week with his whopping 3.8 points and half PPR. Um, However, 
he was in on 62% of the snaps, which is starter snap share. Uh, Adrian Peterson went from playing between 35 and 60% of snaps down to 20% last week. Carry on was in on 18% of snaps and no other running back was in on a snap. So they were down the whole game. And when they were down, they didn't put carry on in. It was all Deandre uh, almost getting two thirds of the snaps last week. And then that four point turnout after they got ran out of the building by the Colts. Um, DeAndre Swift and Detroit have a very easy, uh, the fifth easiest schedule for running backs in the playoffs. So maybe you can get DeAndre at a discount and now, and you have the upside of he's finally starting to get those starter reps. I can't believe I'm recommending a Detroit Lion running back in fantasy football. I feel dirty. Um, but yeah, so that's it's 2020, man. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the it's just a weird year you know that that kind of stuff will happen um a cu- couple more guys i just want to highlight uh jonathan taylor uh mentioned him in a previous pod he's currently rb21 um the colts have the third easiest schedule the rest of the way uh f- four points giving up to the running back position um after this week you know he's got baltimore this week somebody might be willing to finally be like, all right, I've had enough of this guy. He's banged up. He's, he's not producing. Um, but after that, their schedule after that is, is just fantastic from a running back position. Um, so Jonathan Taylor, somebody that, that maybe you can swipe. Um, again, he's got a good playoff schedule, Las Vegas, Houston, not week 16 against Pittsburgh, but chances are, if you get to the title game, hopefully you have somebody else to put out, you know, to put in there and you're not going to have to rely on him because I don't think you're gonna have to pay that much to actually get him. Um, that that's just my guess. Um, I, I think people are, are willing to sell a little low on him. Um, just, just to have that potential upside. Um, and then don't sleep on the potential return of Austin Eckler. Um, I think I think he's somebody that when he comes back and I, and I don't know what his status is, but I mean, he's been out a, a good chunk of time um, when he comes back with Justin Herbert um, as his quarterback. I, I can see him being a potential league winner um, for you. So just, you know, that's somebody where, hey, he's injured, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Maybe somebody's willing to trade him to get it to get a piece now. Um, that that you could get when he's back. Also, if you're a Christian McCaffrey owner, I would trade him straight up for Derrick Henry because of the playoff schedule. Um, I I know the upside that Christian McCaffrey has, um, but we don't know what Mike Davis like. I don't think Mike Davis is going to go away. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Davis does get some goal line work. He's bigger than Christian McCaffrey. Um, Because of their strength of schedule in the playoffs, I'm just saying that I think you could easily justify trading Christian McCaffrey for Derrick Henry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Man, it's going to be once I think people actually take the time to start looking ahead. I think a lot of people are going to start trying to fight over Derrick Henry um, once they actually see that playoff schedule, just because it's crazy. I mean, the average ranking is 30 plus <laughs> as far as his opponents go against the run. So, um, but I want to piggyback off of what you said about Jonathan Taylor. I mean, the guy was extremely disappointing last week, and that's putting it mildly against Detroit. Um, with Jordan Wilkins yep. having 20 carries um, and Naheem Hines picking up the slack in the passing games and getting in the end zone twice. Um, I do. And that's what I want to highlight. I mean, not Jordan Wilkins. He, he's fantastic runner. I really think that by the end of the season, they're really going to try and have Jonathan Taylor be that number one. Um, I don't know what's going on with him. He looked lost at times, just running straight forward into a wall and completely just missing the hole. Like remind me of Trent Richardson kind of like just not, it just wasn't great. It was, it was bad. Um, Yeah. That's a fantastic comparison. But, but when 
Uh, but when he was taken out and then you lose T.Y. Hilton, I actually like what Naheem Hines could do in the second half, given their schedule and given the difficulties that Jonathan Taylor has had. And then you lose T.Y. I think maybe Naheem Hines could have a little bit of play and, you know, make some people happy that, you know, spent a bajillion fab on him after week one. So <clears throat> the, the catch up man. There you go. Um, Alex, are there any running backs that you are trying to stay away from, trade out of, move away from? Uh, I have several in mind, although I think there's one that I'm not going to get or be able to get anything for. Yeah, I mean, the, the pretty clear answer is Zeke, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's the one yeah. where where you're you're just looking. He's got the hardest schedule the rest of the way from from a defense perspective, giving up points to the running back. It is absolutely the hardest schedule. Um, it is the third hardest playoff schedule, um, which includes Cincinnati, San Francisco and Philly, um, which, you know, on the surface doesn't look terrible. It'll be interesting to see. Because I mean, Ben DiNucci is apparently getting benched this week and they're they're bringing in a, another quarterback who's apparently better. Like, is it Colin Kaepernick? His only, the, the only thing that. No, it's not. <laughs> it's somebody you've never heard of. I. Um, I don't. I mean, Andy Dalton threw the ball so many times that if he's going to check down to Zeke six times, then I think Zeke had, you know. I think he still could have his RB1 value just based on the catch passing volume. Um, but I mean, if, if you have them, man, I, I don't know what you do. Um, I, I, honestly, I honestly don't know what you do. You're stuck with him. Rest of season, Zeke or James Robinson? I would take James Robinson. That is insane. Uh, rest of season, Zeke or David Johnson? I would stay with Zeke. Okay. Uh, Gurley? Uh, it's kind of seems like Gurley's getting phased out a little bit by Brian Hill, right? I mean, when, when you watched the game last week... Yeah. Um, there was a long stretch of time in the first half where he wasn't even on the field. Um, I mean, Gurley is currently <laughs> running back six, um, which is outstanding. Um, but it's all touchdown based. Like he he leads the he leads the league in rushing touchdowns. And is that going to continue? I don't know. I I feel like Gurley is somebody that I would potentially be looking at trading. Um, those last three weeks from a playoff standpoint is um, against the Chargers, Tampa Bay, which we know he's probably not going to do too much against Tampa Bay and Kansas City, um, which, yeah, theoretically it's a shootout. But Kansas City's defense has been really good. Um, they, like, yeah, obviously they have they have Patrick Mahomes, but I mean, they, they would be win- I think, honestly, they would be winning games if if Ben DiNucci was their quarterback because their defense has been that good and Andy Reid's able to scheme people open enough where you can miss by five yards and the guy will still catch it because there's nobody around him. Um, so yeah, I, get rid of Zeke. Um, I, I'm going to start looking at figuring out ways to see if I can trade Todd Gurley and what I can, what I can get for him just because he's been so touchdown dependent. Yeah. Uh, I don't, if you're the Zeke manager, I don't think anybody wants him. I don't like, I think you're just getting shot down trades and you're not getting anything as far as the value is that you think you should get for Zeke. And then you look at the playoff schedule yeah. and you're like, crap, I really want to move this guy. And then nobody wants to trade with you because well, they don't have a lot going on. They're also, <laughs> And and they're also looking at the playoff schedule and they're like, nope. Yeah, like it doesn't, no, no, you no. don't have to be the savviest manager to look at the playoff schedule and see San Francisco in the middle of it and be like, oh, uh, well, how are these other two teams doing that I have to go against besides San Fran? Right. And then you're like, oh, yep. 
Well, they just played Philly, and that game wasn't very pretty. So maybe Philly in Week 16 isn't going to be great for Zeke. So, right. Woof. Uh, a different running back that I'm trying to stay away from, and not even stay away from, but I want to trade out of. I If I have Dalvin Cook, I am trading him straight up for Derrick Henry. Uh, Dalvin Cook with the second mm. most difficult playoff schedule of Tampa Bay, Chicago, and New Orleans. Um, like, these three teams... What, New Orleans is giving up the fifth fewest points to the running back position. Um, Tampa Bay is giving up the 10th fewest points, and Chicago is giving up the 13th fewest points. So all top, you know, 12, 13 team teams all in a row for your fantasy playoffs. Z or Dalvin's going to have a hard time finding a hole. Um, I just... Kirk Cousins doesn't inspire me to be able to like get the passing game going to open up the run against any of those three teams. I just see I just see Delvin being completely shut down in the fantasy playoffs. Um I don't know. I'd be hoping for double digit points out of him against any of those three teams. So I would absolutely try to trade Dalvin after his 40 point explosion to try and get Derrick Henry. Maybe not at, maybe not this week, but maybe next week because Dalvin does have Detroit on tap this week. And that's, that's not so bad considering they give up the second most and points to running backs. Chances are that when we get to week 14, 15, 16, do you really think Dalvin Cook is going to be healthy? Oh, Alex, now let's not be negative. I'm, I'm being consistent. <sighs> Consistently negative. And then the running backs, yeah, the running back room with the most difficult playoff schedule is the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I mean, I think maybe by then Chase Edmonds will be the number one running back on that team. Um, he certainly has looked far more explosive than Kenyon Drake has. Um, but, you know, going up against the Giants, the Eagles and San Fran three in a row isn't just just not great. So I don't even know what you could get for Edmonds is the trouble. Like maybe you could get an RB2. Maybe you, you could ain't get getting Montgomery. anything for Drake. No, you're not getting anything for Drake. I mean, he's hurt. He's probably not going to play. When he does play, who knows what his snap count is or like what his snap share is. Um, what do you think you yeah, can get for Edmonds? Yeah, you're not getting Montgomery for Edmonds either. You don't think you're going to get Ed Montgomery? No. No, no, uh, no chance. You shouldn't. Um, huh. I, I, I feel like he's somebody where maybe you try to package him to get one of those guys that we've previously talked about, like a Monty or um, even a, a Jonathan Taylor type type person where they have the easier schedule um you know th this is kind of the time where more than ever if you have depth you want to be upgrading the depth to have stars um if if you're like having depth can get you to the playoffs having this the the studs that have the schedule in the playoffs is, is when you win your league so, you know, at some point, you always want to be thinking about how can I upgrade my depth into somebody that, that could win me a title? Yeah, um, a couple more of those, I think, you know, depth kind of guys that weren't drafted to be people's RB ones and twos. Um, Todd Gurley, who you've talked about and gushed over and James Robinson. I want to start with Gurley, though. Uh, Gurley obviously mm -hmm. has vastly outperformed his ADP and was is so far has been a huge value. Um, yes, he did appear to potentially get phased out a little bit, but he has an extremely difficult playoff schedule going up against the Chargers, the Bucks. And the Chiefs, I would absolutely try to trade away Todd Gurley uh, with him losing playing time to Brian Hill and facing 
what two top 10 defenses against running backs. Um, yes. So I would absolutely try to get rid of, of Gurley. And then the second one is James Robinson. Um, who's I believe has what the, like the 12th most difficult 11th, most difficult schedule playoff schedule for running backs, Jacksonville facing the Tennessee Titans who does not intimidate you at all. But then weeks 15 and 16 is Baltimore and Chicago back to back Baltimore being the giving up the second fewest points to running backs in Chicago uh, currently ranked 13th. So James Robinson has absolutely outperformed what anybody ever expected of him. He had a 20 point week last week. Um, has Houston on tap this week, green Bay week after like there, he's going to put up some points. There's some appeal there. I would just try to trade him um, and, and get somebody with a little bit of an easier schedule. Now I know his 90% snap share is going to be missed, but like, I don't know. You got Jake Luton throwing the ball back there. I think everybody's yeah, a little that's bit nervous. More of the problem than anything. I think everybody's a little bit nervous. Like, is he going to be, is this Ben DiNucci 2.0? Like how bad is that team going to be? So <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, maybe you'll have issues finding trade partners because people are looking to see how well they can even move the ball without Minshew back there. Um, but yeah. I am excited for the rest of that offense when Minshew gets healthy and comes back though and he can finally throw accurately again yep but I agree any other running backs you're trying to stay away from or should we move into receivers no I, I think we can go go ahead to receivers again um, go to our website the fantasyfootballsackos.com take a look at this stuff it should all be sortable um, so you can kind of take a look for yourself and, and figure out exactly what you what you want to do um, you know, we're, we're kind of talking about the highlights um, here from from a positive and negative standpoint. Um, but, you know, hey, our words, as great as they are, sometimes seeing is believing and it's much easier to visualize something um, than it is. To remember what what two random dudes on a podcast said. <laughs> um, so go check out our website and uh, and see for yourself kind of what we're talking about. There you go. All right. Uh, receivers that I like rest of season. Um, I talked about Justin Herbert at quarterback. I'm going to piggyback off of that and chit chat about how much I love Keenan Allen. Um, the guy is just absolutely incredible. Their playoff schedule is the what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, eighth, ninth easiest for receivers. As far as strength of schedule is concerned, um, with Atlanta, Las Vegas, and Denver on tap, I just think that they are going to be extremely efficient in moving the football in the playoffs. And I have some statistics as well. Um, Allen, Keenan Allen finishes since Justin Herbert's first start, half PPR, week two, 23rd, week three, fourth week four 41st week five he got hurt he still finished 34th he had a bye week in week six and week seven he finished 13th and week eight he finished 12th um playoffs points given up to receivers atlanta gives up the fifth most the vegas gives up the 13th fewest so vegas that might be a bomb in the middle of it but then denver championship round gives up the 14th most you're seeing him being targeted you know, double digit targets in like the first half of last week. Uh, Keenan Allen is wide receiver mm -hmm. 10 since Herbert's first start, including his bye week and his wide receiver eight in weekly average since Herbert's first start. Like he's a top 10 wide out rest of the season. And then you give him the a top 10 easy schedule to produce against. And I just I'm so excited for what Keenan Allen is going to be able to do for the rest of the season. Um, he absolutely looks like Herbert's most favorite of all favorite targets. So he, it's not the most easy schedule, but you combine an easier schedule with that quarterback and those targets. And I'm all about Keenan Allen. 
I'm really scared that I'm going to bring up a wide receiver that had one catch last week and say that maybe you should be targeting him. But here we go. Um, Marquise Hollywood Brown. Oh, um, he had two targets. He only had one been, catch. No, I no, I I know. Um, he's somebody that I think you should be targeting for the stretch run here. Um, he's got a rough matchup this week against Indianapolis. Um, he he did voice his frustration um, about not getting the ball, which for whatever reason, it seems like when a wide receiver does that, they seem to get the ball thrown their way a little bit more. Like it's, right. they're, they're definitely like the squeaky wheel gets the grease type of thing. Um, so Baltimore this week has Indy rough, but then after that it, he's got one of the better schedules the rest of the way from teams that, that are giving up points to the wide receiver. Um, and, and he has the fifth easiest uh, playoff schedule, um, which consists of against Cleveland, Jacksonville, and the Giants. Um, the Giants with Darius Slay might be a slight concern, but week 14 and 15 are, are easy, easy matchups for him. Um, he's currently wide receiver 43. Um, I think you can trade and get him for not a whole lot. Um, and I, I think you should be trying to get him, um, for, for pennies because I think he could pay dividends down the stretch. Yeah. When I said that I tried to trade for Derrick Henry earlier, I tried to trade James Connor and Hollywood Brown for Derrick Henry. And that was very quickly turned down. So gotta do what you gotta do. Um, woof. The wide receivers with the... <laughs> easiest playoff schedule are actually a tie between two teams and that those being the Cincinnati Bengals and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, if you're the Bengals, you, if you have Tyler Boyd and T Higgins, you've got to start them every week. T Higgins is the real freaking deal, man. Um, traded him away yep. in a league and I think mm -hmm. I miss him already. Um, but the Cincinnati Bengals playoff schedule is Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Houston. Baby, come back. Come back to me. Um, Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> or, I'm sorry. Let's start with Dallas here. Dallas is 26th against receivers. Pittsburgh, 25th. And Houston is 27th. So bottom 10 teams, all three, all in a row. And it's going to be beautiful. Joe Burrow is going to just light up those three teams, especially if Dallas is as pathetic as they are now. So, yeah, I would go get some T Higgins if you can, even in redraft. I, I can't wait to see how good Joe Burrow and that offense is going to be when he actually gets an offensive line and Joe Mixon can, can stay healthy. Um, I, like year two and year three, like he he's probably going to be a top five quarterback for for a while here, um, and that that just makes me super excited. Yeah, um, and the best part that, is that's too just a is I think I, I I love everything about it. I think you'll be able to get him. I mean, assuming he doesn't can like light the absolutely just light the world on fire, which I don't think he really will. Um, at least rest of the season. Now he might do well in the playoffs, but like he loves throwing to his receivers. And I, I think he's going to, like, you're going to be able to get Joe Burrow in what, like the eighth round, ninth round next year, you think? So he's going to yeah, be, maybe. I think he's going to be like the mid. Uh, or later middle round uh, steal that Kyler Murray was this year. But. Yeah, I, I, I feel you. Um, the, the Bears, again, they pop up. They have the third easiest playoff schedule. Uh, see if Allen Robinson's available. Um, he should he should be a, a wide receiver one the rest of the way. Um, so see see if he's available, if, if people are sleeping a little bit on, on what his schedule looks like. Um, and then you already brought up Tampa Bay having, you know, tied for the easiest playoff schedule. 
if uh if there's a chris godwin owner um that uh you know is maybe a little scared of that injury and um they're worried about antonio brown taking a bunch of targets um you know he's maybe somebody that that you could look at getting who has a a great matchup uh in the playoffs minnesota atlanta detroit um he seems to be Brady's favorite target. Obviously, we don't know what Antonio Brown is going to do uh, to that offense. Um, and maybe Antonio Brown's the one to own. But um, I'm just saying that you could potentially look at a, at a Chris Godwin um, with that schedule. Maybe buy a little low. People are, are worried about the, the Brown factor and don't know what it's going to look like. But um, he, he would be somebody that I would be looking at potentially acquiring. Yeah. And then if you can scare the Tyreek Hill manager into thinking that uh, Tyreek is touchdown dependent because he only has, you know, a few catches a game. And if it wasn't for the the one Mm -hmm. score he has every game, like last like this line from last game, he had six targets against the Jets. He only had four catches, but he put up 100 yards and two scores. Like, if if you take the touchdowns out of Tyreek's scoring, the guy hasn't gone over 100 yards once. I mean, 98, 99. So he's right there. But he's only had double-digit scoring or double-digit targets, excuse me, in two weeks this whole season. His low is against Buffalo. He only had three targets. And outside of that, he's been six per week pretty much. So... If you can scare the Tyreek Hill manager who, I mean, Tyreek's currently third in uh, wide, third at wide receiver in half PPR right now. But if you can scare him into letting go of him because those yeah, touchdowns, that Kansas City playoff schedule of Miami, New Orleans, Atlanta. Yeah, the Miami one isn't that great. Um, a great preseason call by you, by the way, on that Miami defense. Can't believe it. Um well, if if Tua if Kua does doesn't write the sh- if Tua doesn't write the ship here and keeps giving people short fields, then that Miami might fall out of the top ten. But but yeah, so far so good on that. But man, you got to think that Kansas City is going to light it up in the playoffs. So I would try to get uh, Tyreek if you can. And then as far as wide receivers, I'm trying to get rid of man. That Atlanta Falcons playoff schedule of the Chargers, Tampa Bay, and Kansas City, the second most difficult, that schedule, I mean, those three teams combined uh, <laughs> to, to give up the eighth fewest points to receivers, 8.33. So, I mean, I just, man... And Ridley's already banged up right now, so maybe you try and and trade Ridley. Um, It's just been it's been difficult for that team, honestly. But are you is there anybody that you're trying to stay away from? Yeah, to. Yeah, the the number one difficulty of schedules, Denver. And I'm not really sure you're really playing anybody on Denver anyway. So it's probably just more of a stay away than it already was. Um, New England has the fourth most difficult schedule in the playoffs. And I don't think you're starting any of those wide receivers either. Um, You know, Julian Edelman might be back by the end of the season. But like. You're you're staying away from both of those teams. Um, period end of story uh miami has the sixth most difficult schedule uh kansas city new england and las vegas um not sure really sure you're probably starting Devonte parker if you have to but he would be somebody especially after two his performance last week that you would be trying to package him and someone to to go get like an Allen robinson potentially um or, you know, trade Devontae Parker for T. Higgins or so, something like that where, um, you know, just take the schedule. I, I am worried about Tua and, and what he's going to be able to do. He, he did not look great. Um, 
and, and that's being kind. Uh, we, we talked about, um, you know, uh, Deshaun Watson having a tough playoff schedule, um, and so do his wide receivers, obviously. Um, so if you're sitting there with Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks has looked a lot better uh, since Bill O'Brien is no longer there. Um, but just he's a guy where, you know, maybe if if Houston balls out against Jacksonville this week and, and Brandon Cooks puts up a, another big week, that he's somebody that potentially you would be like, all right, thanks for thanks for playing. And um, I mean, week 13, 14, 15, you know, getting into the playoffs in the first two weeks is Indy, Chicago, Indy. You don't want anything to do with that if you're a Will Fuller or Brandon Cooks owner. Um, get get me away. Um, so you know, be be trying to trade. Uh, be trying to trade those guys. Yeah, and just t- to highlight how well Brandon Cooks has done for the last three weeks, he's top. He's a top ten receiver in PPR. Thirty catches, or excuse me, thirty targets, twenty four catches, two hundred eighty nine yards, and two scores. He's nearly doubled every stat from his first four weeks in the last three weeks. His playoff schedule, the the Chicago, Indy, Cincinnati, like you said, it's just it's not great. But he has done so well lately, and with Jacksonville this week is he's going to be great. Cleveland next week he will be fine again. So if you can trade him, you know, yep. even you could even trade him this week. I mean, you could his value is wide receiver two or better rest of season. I have no issues trying to trade Brandon cooks um, and getting something up, uh, something up with a, with the easier playoff schedule, a wide receiver two or better. Um, you know, I would trade, I would flip Brandon cooks for Godwin. I would flip him. I don't think I would trade him for Mike Evans just because he's been so horribly inconsistent um and then you add antonio brown to that yeah but and and antonio brown's going to be pulling pulling coverage away from mike evans theoretically um hey tom brady's the one you want to own there from a from a quarterback perspective um but yeah brandon cook's currently uh wide receiver 32 um you know, get another big week under the belt and see if you can sell high on him uh, with with that playoff schedule coming. Somehow, Will Fuller hasn't gotten hurt yet. Um, so theoretically, that's coming as well. Um, so, yeah, Brandon Cooks and, and Will Fuller are the, are the two that immediately jump out as as me not wanting a piece of. And and same thing with Justin Jefferson. Um, and I, I know I've been super down on him. Um, and I, he, he had a big week a couple weeks ago. I get that. But his, their playoff schedule is Tampa Bay and Chicago the first two weeks. Um, and so if somebody is looking at the upside of Justin Jefferson, that's great. But you're not playing him in when you get to the playoffs. Like he, he's not going to do anything. He, he already doesn't really have the target share um, or, or just like sheer enough targets. Um, in a potential really heavy run first offense. Um, and we already were down on Devin Cook too. Um, but but he's somebody that, you know, maybe you look at, hey, you want this pretty looking rookie sitting over here? Um, but when you get down to the brass tacks of, of trying to win it, uh, he's not going to be there to help you. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And one thing I would say about Brandon Cooks is, do you think you could flip him for Tyler Boyd after this week if he does well against Jacksonville? Tyler Boyd, no. Bengals, easiest no. schedule. You don't think? No, Tyler Boyd's so good. Like yeah. You're going to just straight up. Uh, so he's going through the bye week this week, right? It's, I mean, yeah. Tyler Boyd's currently wide receiver eight. On, on one of the most pass happy offenses. No, nobody's given up Tyler Boyd. Uh, maybe if you can package him. I don't know. He's only had two weeks with double digit targets, but. And yeah, I don't I don't know. I would try or maybe do it now because he's on a buy. If maybe if somebody is looking to avoid a bye week. But. Yeah, if right, if you. 
you should be trying to go pick up Tyler Boyd, who's only getting better. He's so good. He is. All right, let's move on. Or uh, have we have we talked about? Is that all the receivers you want to talk about as far as avoiding as well? I would. I do. Go check them out for yourself on our website. There you go. All right. Let's uh, let's finish up with some tight ends here. Um, Yuck. Yeah. I mean, it's there is not a there is not a lot to like here. What I, what I guess I want to say before we actually start talking about this is like. If you have Travis Kelsey, you have the single largest in slot advantage over any other position. As far as like the points that he is going to score above the average, what the average tight end puts up. So congratulations to you. Uh, I tried to trade for him in Alex and I's league of record. And the person who has him on his team told me that it would take my firstborn child and my 401k to get Travis Kelsey off of his team. So I, uh, I told him that was an easy decision and that I would be ready to sign over my 401k on, you know, whenever he's available. <laughs> but then he decided that wasn't enough. So we were not able to make ends meet. And I do not have Travis Kelsey, um, who has what the fifth easiest playoff schedule um, with Miami, New Orleans and, and Atlanta and is clearly, clearly tight end one. Uh, yeah. Clearly. I mean, without a doubt, he's just per- yeah. permanent tight end one. So, I mean, that, that kind of sucks. Um, I guess it is what it is, but as, as far as like, as far as people with easier playoff schedules go, I mean, Jimmy Graham is looking at an easy playoff schedule. Um, we've talked about Nick Foles. We've talked about Montgomery. I mean, the bears across the board just have a very easy playoff schedule. Um, they have the easiest rest of season schedule as far as what the defenses are giving up to the various um, positions across the board and, and the easiest overall schedule. Um, I mean, if you're if you're facing yeah, the, the, the really, Texans, my Minnesota yeah. and Jacksonville, it's going to happen. The the crazy thing about looking at the strength of schedule for tight ends is you can't start any of them that have the easiest schedules. Like, so the, the, the easiest schedules, Minnesota from a tight end perspective, there's nobody there that you're starting. You're, you're not picking up Kyle Rudolph. You're not picking up anybody else there. Um, Jacksonville has the third easiest schedule. Yeah. I mean, you're not, like you're, you're not picking up tight. Ty- yeah. You're not picking up Tyler Eifert to play him. Um, Dallas. Eh, maybe. I mean, if, if, if Andy Dalton's gonna gonna continue to check down, yeah. I mean, if 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 Dalton Schultz is available, um, he he's the guy um, that you know you got got to hope Blandy Blandy's checking down, uh, and then Seattle, like Greg Olson, Will Disley, like you're you're not picking them up and starting them with their wide receivers that they have. And so you're already at a six. It's Kansas City. You're not getting Travis Kelsey. The seventh easiest schedule is Baltimore. Like if you're a Mark Andrews fan, like, yeah, you're, you're happy with that, but you're probably not able to tr- like if, if I'm a Zeke owner, I would I would offer Zeke straight up for Kelsey or I would do Zeke plus for Kelsey because I think it make I, I think it's just worth it. Wow. Wow. How far Zeke has fallen. Uh, if I if I was the Kelsey manager, I think I would probably turn that down because Zeke has been yeah. such garbage. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's incredible. Um, somebody sneaky though that I like, regardless of his middle of the pack, um, playoff schedule is Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper has <clears throat> he had six targets week six 10 targets the week before that and seven targets the week before that uh he's really come on as the season has gone along and there's been you know injuries to the other tight ends on that team and now obj out of this out for the season i really think that austin hooper could evolve into like the second read 
or potentially first read on a lot of passing plays. It's really just him and Landry and maybe, you know, what, Richard Higgins. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I, that appeals to me a lot. Now, again, he has like a middle of the road playoff schedule with uh, Baltimore, the Giants and the Jets. It's really just the week one obstacle. If he does OK against Baltimore, I think he'll be fine against the Giants and the Jets back to back. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. As far as a tight end, I would recommend picking up um, tight ends to stay away from. I don't know. I'm if you want to if you're looking at strength of schedule, the only one that really jumps out is um, Darren Waller. The Waller uh, mm-hmm. has the fourth most difficult tight end schedule for the playoffs with Indy, the Chargers and Miami. I mean, it's really just because Indy and Miami are very good. The Chargers are OK on the outside in the D backs, but Man, so I'm, but like people aren't really there's not a lot of buying and selling tight ends. I feel like like you, people try to trade for Kittle and they tried to trade for Kelsey. And I feel like everybody else, nobody really tries to move around a lot. But I don't know. Yeah, uh, t- tight ends are are tough. You want the premium ones and. Two of the th- two of the three or two of the four top premium tight ends were were Kittle and Zach Ertz coming into the season. And if you spent on them in the first four rounds, that didn't turn out well for you. So, you know, there, there's only so much you can do um, at the tight end spot the rest of the year. Yeah, it's it's Kelsey and then everybody else. But uh, if you, yep. I do have this little last question for you before we wrap up here. If you are the George Kittle manager, are you dropping George Kittle to pick up somebody? Are you holding him in an IR slot? Are you dropping somebody in your IR slot to hold, to try to hold on to Kittle in hopes that there's the miracle comeback? Yeah. So this comes down for one thing for me and it's, are they going to, add an 18th week of the season and add another playoff team. Because that's the only way that I think Kittle comes back is if they're in playoff contention. They they got smoked by the Packers as we recording we're recording this. I think it's 34 to 3. Aaron Jones um did not get another goal line carry at the one. They kicked a field goal at the one and Rodgers threw another pass at the one. I'm just on tilt over I here. Love I can't it. do anything with Aaron Jones. I love it. He finished right, with so, 10 points. So here. <laughs> yeah, it's total crap. Um, yeah, he should he could have could have slash should have had three touchdowns. Um either way. Um, so you know, the 49ers are getting shellacked. Um, the only way they make the playoffs is, is if they add an eighth team. Um and I, I think by the time that that kills healthy enough to play again, I, I think they're probably going to be out of the playoff race unless they add that eighth team. So um, that's the only conditional that I would throw on there is I, I don't I don't think he's coming back. So I, I don't think you need to hold on to him. Yeah, but if they add additional weeks to the season anyway, then a lot of people. I mean, you're talking about like. That would mean that X amount of games were canceled, which at this point could like be during playoff time anyway. So you're talking about canceling fantasy football leagues and all that anyways, right? Or am I just imagining that? Yeah, theoretically. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm trying to block that out because I just know the shitstorm that's brewing, um, especially me being one in seven and having to say, nope, uh, everybody's getting their money back this year. It'll be great. Can't it wait. is. It is if they cancel a game and you have starters on teams whose games got canceled during the fantasy playoffs. I don't know how in good conscience you say, no, no, sorry. You have to pick up people from other teams and play them. I just I don't know how you do it. It just sucks. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So. Well, hey, do, you, do, you, do you have the news? Do, do you have the newsy stuff drop? Yeah, hold on. Let me do it. Newsy stuff. Um, how's the Bachelorette going? Uh, well, you see, it was on air tonight. Um, but I chose to record this with you instead. What I do know 
is that I can't believe you say I chose to record a podcast with you instead of watch The Bachelorette while Thursday Night Football is on. So you always watch The Bachelorette instead of watch Thursday Night Football? I have multiple TVs and I flip back and forth or, or like I'll, I'll record The Bachelorette and watch it with my wife. Like if it's a blowout, we'll just like turn it on at halftime and fly through the commercials. And then I mean, like, I don't know. Dale's pretty cool. And and Claire and him are going to run off is, together. Is that a race car driver? No, it's not Dale Earnhardt. It's his name's Dale. Okay. He actually played football for the Bears. He was on the practice squad. Dale. Is that you, Dale? <clears throat> but no, the Bachelor, it's great, man. It's a great, it's a high quality show. Tasha's going to be on. She's going to be single, looking to mingle. There's going to be a lot of dudes just waiting to... To try and, you know, lock it down, going for that rose. So, yeah, it's it's great, man. You hate all you want, man. The Bachelor, that's high quality content. So it's it's not. But yeah, no, that is newsy stuff, Worley. So Claire ends her season early. <laughs> the oldest Bachelorette ends her season early to run off with this Dale guy who's like, he says he's all about Dale. the boys and he's not going to monopolize everybody else's time. Homeboy has a hour, 45 minute makeout session with Claire. And when he said before that, oh, it'll be five minutes. I just have to talk to you real quick. 45 minutes later, the other dude, the other dudes just come and knock on the door and be like, uh, are you in there? Can we, can we, whenever, date? whenever I say something's going to take five, whenever I say something's going to take five minutes, it usually only takes one minute. So for it to go an hour, <laughs> 45 is impressive. Well, it was 45 minutes to an hour. I said that backwards, but yes, I mean, if they didn't get interrupted by somebody else, one of the other contestants, it would have gone an hour and 45, but yeah, like she's been with this guy for two weeks and she said that she loves him. How does that work? Alex, what's the fastest you've all ever, you've ever fallen in love with someone or something? Uh, myself every time I look in a mirror. And on that note, we are going to transfer to the social media page. Thank you guys <laughs> for listening. Thank you for following. We are on all social medias at the FF Sackos coming up on 800 Twitter followers. You guys are insane. We love you. What up? Uh, hit the uh, like button, subscribe, ring the bell if you're on YouTube and have a good night. Go to the website. Check out our colors. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.